So I put a picture together here, and I'm just going to expand on a couple of these items a bit more. Um, you might want to have a carpenter's knife or a flathead screwdriver um, to help pry open the controller. And I'd recommend having some thin wire and uh, also uh, an X-Acto knife. Um, a carpenter's knife might work, but uh, X-Acto knife works the best. And also uh, a motherboard uh, holder. I'm not sure the exact names for these, but uh, it just helps keep your motherboard stable while you scrape away on one of the contact points. And uh, your drill and a drill bit. Um, you're going to be slowly working up to a bigger drill bit for the button. Um, but the button itself, um, a button cap if you want, it just makes it a bit more comfortable. And an NPN transistor and uh, an IC chip. And I'll have a link for the IC chip, the transistor, button cap, and button in the description below. And as you can see, you can take out the, the four screws that are on the back of the controller here. And then you can uh, take your flathead screwdriver, your carpenter's knife, and uh, there's going to be two uh, kind of prongs on the inside middle, and uh, you just kind of want to pry them open, try not to damage your, uh, the controller as much as you can when you're doing this. And then uh, on each side of the controller, there's uh, two prongs that you need to uh, put your screwdriver in and kind of like turn it, and it should pop off. And then uh, you can undo the ribbon cable and make point of which way the ribbon goes in. Take out the battery and then you can take out the, the battery holder. For these rumbles, make point uh, which way the wires are soldered in. Um, and then you can unsolder them. And undo your ribbon cable here connecting the motherboard to the touchpad and then you can undo the screw in the middle and then for some of these controllers uh, the motherboard and the touchpad for the buttons is uh, clipped in so you can unclip it and there's two clips on either side here so for the actual contact point that you're going to be scraping and soldering to there's a website called acidmods.com and they have a forum here with a bunch of PCB scans. I'll have a link in the description for this website uh, down below. But as you can see, they with the scans, they show the contact points that are related to their buttons. And as you can see, this one has the right trigger. Um, this is a community forum, so it's community-based and people figure out which ones are which um, by submitting in and this one shows the triggers um, but as you'll see this one does not and this one does not and this is actually I believe the new redesigned PS4 controller um, and it doesn't show any of them but uh, as you can see that's where the contact points are for the for the touchpad and my guess is the buttons are kind of somewhere around here if you were to um, so what you might have to do is scrape away at some of these contact points and figure out for yourself which one's the actual trigger if it doesn't show it on this website or if you can find some other website that shows it but um, I can tell you right now the controller that I'm going to be modding today is the TH201 and this uh, scan only shows the triangle circle X and square but I can tell you that this top left one here is the right trigger so that's the one um, for most video games uh, is the shoot button so um, but what you'll have to do if you have one of these ones that doesn't show it is you might have to scrape away at uh, some of these contact points and you might have to use a wire and connect the contact point with the ground, which is right here, and have a game open and figure out which button it is. Um, but this one is very nice because the solder points are either going to be on this side, excuse me, or they're going to be on this side. Um, I believe that's the only model of these motherboards so far that uh, has it like that. Um, but for this 
when I was modding it here, I didn't capture any footage of me actually soldering to this one because I did two mods at once. Uh, I was doing the scuff mod for the triangle here. Uh, but it's essentially the same thing, just you know, a different contact point. Uh, so for this one, that that's the triangle, and this one is our right trigger. So now that you know what contact point to scrape, you can go ahead and start doing that. And just take your X-Acto knife and start scraping away until you can see some uh, uh, metal. And then it also helps if you have a small paint brush to slowly uh, brush away the sh shavings from the motherboard while you scrape. So now you're going to want to at least cut yourself a good 5 inches of wire. Um, don't be shy with the wire if you got lots. Um, that way you if you give yourself some extra, then you can uh, you don't have to worry about having uh, too little and replace the wire. And then you can uh, start soldering. And kind of the best method to this, I find, is if you can somehow get a little piece of solder onto the contact and and then uh, put some solder on the wire and. Uh, Use your soldering iron and kind of just heat up a little farther back on the wire. And uh, while you're doing that, uh, have it on the contact point, and then it will hopefully heat up the solder that's on the motherboard and hopefully solder it. Um, these contact points are very hard to solder to, too, so don't beat yourself up if you can't get it. And you know, I think on the after I had soldered this, I had actually taken it off and did a better job. So this is going to be very important that you uh, use your hot glue gun and uh, hot glue over your uh, solder points um, to reinforce them because uh, I guarantee they're probably not going to be strong enough by themselves. And as you can see that blue wire is my R2 and the green was my triangle. And you can flip the motherboard over and also get some glue on the other side as well, reinforce it a bit more. and that's kind of what it should look like. Sorry about the focus here, I'm hoping to get a macro lens soon so I don't have problems with close-ups, but um, you can get your controller back together a little bit, um, enough to uh, put your battery back in and press the PS button to turn it back on and grab your wires you soldered, um, or just wire for the trigger, and uh, connect it to that uh, where I am connecting it right there to that ground and have a game open and you will be able to notice whether or not the button activates. So now to uh, drill the hole for the button uh, I did mine about as you can see about 15 centimeters in that way and then kind of about uh, I'd say roughly 35 centimeters from like the stub of the controller but uh, anywhere really that uh, is most comfortable for you you can, you can drill the hole um, but you will have to make sure it doesn't uh, get in the way of the rumbles um, unless you plan on taking the rumbles completely out but as you can see here I for the to put the button in I pretty much just kept on uh, using small well get used a small drill bit and got bigger and bigger until the button finally fit um, it's just the safest way to do it um, you don't want to start off with a big drill bit anyways because you might uh, you might um, slip and drill in a bit to not the spot that you wanted to so that's the best way to do it I find so you can go ahead and put your button in and uh, glue it down um, kind of glue around just two sides of it and then uh, just to make sure it's in there and then uh, kind of hold it like I am with that uh, uh, tool. And then once that's uh, cooled off, um, I believe I uh, put on the front here and I tested it just to make sure it was going to fit okay. Um, but uh, once you've actually got it all glued around it, you can go ahead and bend back those prongs um, just so that they don't get in the way. it should look something like that. 
So to just give a rundown on how we're going to be wiring this, um, this is going to be our IC chip here. Um, this is with the prongs facing downwards. Um, so this is our notch here, um, facing upwards, and our prongs from 1, 2, 3, 4 to 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, our number one prong here is our positive, our eight is our negative, and our five here is the only prong, other prong we're actually going to be using. Um, I'm just going to call it our pulser because what it's going to be doing is basically pulsing uh, voltage um, or power, um, and that's how we're going to create the rapid fire. So what's going to happen? Um, depending on how you glue this into the controller, we're gonna be flipping this um, flipping this over like this. So everything's gonna be kind of backwards. So this will be our pulser, um, this will be our positive, and this will be our negative here. Um, so we're gonna get power here from our uh, rumble. Um, so we're going to wire that to here, and then um, uh, we're going to get uh, our ground from our joystick, and we'll wire that to uh, number 8 here, and then um, on our transistor here, we have our collector, our base, and our emitter. Um, the NPN stands for negative, positive, negative. So our negative, our positive, and our negative. Um, so what's going to happen? Sorry guys, but actually uh, I screwed something up. Um, your ground is actually supposed to go to the collector, and then your uh, R2 is supposed to go to the emitter so sorry about that screw up guys um, ground to the collector R2 to the emitter and then um, from our pulser here we're going to wire that up to one of the prongs on the button and then the other uh, prong on the button is gonna wire to our base on our transistor. So it's gonna pretty much look like that. Um, so what's gonna happen is, uh, this is a closed circuit right now, but once we press down the button, it's gonna open the circuit and it's gonna allow the pulser to pulse power through to the collector. And uh, a basic understanding of how the transistor works is, um, if you have power going to your middle here, it's going to allow your uh, your power or your negative um, to uh, be allowed to fed be fed through to your uh, from your collector to your emitter, and that's how. So it's going to be pulsing the circuit basically on and off um, by holding down the button. Um, once you let go, it's going to close the circuit. So, um, hopefully I explained that good for you guys. And uh, let's get to actually wiring it. So you can see I'm kind of going to be uh, bending back these prongs on the transistor because I'm going to be kind of gluing it in upside down. Um, a lot uh, up against the rumble there. So you can go ahead and take your wire from your R2 and uh, cut some of it off. You're not going to need all of it and uh, strip it and then solder that straight to your emitter on your NPN transistor.
So you can go ahead and take your IC chip and um, put some glue on it and then uh, have your prongs facing up and uh, glue it to where I'm going to glue it unless you can find a better spot for it in the controller. So now uh, cut, you know, at least a good two or three inches worth of wire for both your um, power and your ground for the IC chip. Um, so what I'm gonna I'm gonna be powering the IC chip through the getting the power from the rumble. So that's your positive. Um, you can solder to the same point I am if uh, this, you're using the same motherboard, uh, and then. You can solder that power to your uh, uh, prong one, and then we'll get our negative um, or our ground negative from the joystick, and we'll solder that to prong eight. Go ahead and get another uh, black wire, um, a short one, about an inch or two, and we're going to be wiring this from our ground to our uh, collector on the transistor. I'm not sure why, but I, I was having troubles soldering to the collector. Um, it actually took me a while. I just uh, cut the clips here. So you can go ahead and cut yourself about uh, two eight-inch wires. and. Um, the first one here we're going to solder to uh, pin 5 on our IC chip and then the other end is going to be soldered to our button. So one will be wired to the pulser and one will be wired to the base of the transmitter. Um, so they got to be uh, diagonally opposite. Um, you could go this way um, or this way, but you can't go uh, direct opposite of each other. So I wanted to explain that because as you can see here, I forgot how these buttons work and I uh, wired it uh, straight across from it. So make sure you uh, solder it uh, diagonally opposite uh, pin. And uh, from that diagonally opposite pin, on the button, I wired it to my base on my transistor. At this point, I would uh, plug your battery in, fire up a game, turn your controller on, controller on, make sure your controller works, and also test your rapid fire and make sure it works. Now, depending on where you installed your IC chip and your transistor, now the spot that I installed it on, these support beams for the backing of the controller uh, get in the way. So what I would do here is I took my carpenter's knife um, and kind of cut down the, the support and uh, used pliers to pull it out. And then afterwards, if you have one, uh, you can use your drill mill and grind away the kind of the rough edges and you know kind of get it a bit more smooth. And don't worry about uh, the losing the support beams, you know, affecting how the controller goes together. It all, after I'd put it together, it uh, fitted fine, so don't worry about that. And you'll basically want to just keep at this until you can fit your controller back together. So go ahead, if you haven't already, plug the touchpad cable into the motherboard 
and then uh, you can use your soldering iron and solder your rumbles back in on both sides. And then once you've done that, you can uh, take your uh, plastic piece that holds the battery and is also the reset button and put that in, uh, plug your battery in, go ahead and plug the ribbon in from the back of the controller into the motherboard and usually that little blue piece on the ribbon is facing outwards to the right of the controller and then go ahead and close the controller up um, and just make sure that when you're putting it back together you know, none of your wires are getting tangled in the the rumbles or, you know, just in any spot that they might get uh, crunched. And go ahead, once you got the back on, put your four screws in and then turn it on. Make sure everything works fine. It turns on and your rapid fire works. once you've got it back together you can now take your button cap and put a little piece of uh, hot glue in it and uh, put the button on or put the button cap onto the button all right so I got black ops 3 open right here uh, I'm just gonna test the rapid fire I've got it right here works fine And um, trigger works too. Single shot. So that's the rapid fire mod for you guys. Uh, hope you liked it. Um, please like the video if you did. Uh, and stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.